If you guys haven't checked out my previous videos, you'll definitely want to. I was fresh off of back-to-back -back day threes, making it into the top 2% of the field in both the monster stack and the double stack. However, I busted on day one of the main event, my worst finish ever. I definitely needed some time off, but I wanted to keep barreling through. It was a tough balance the whole series for me, trying to make sure I had time off, but also trying to make sure I was getting on the grind. I managed to do that here in the crazy eights, the very first flight available. I got to work right away at 100, 200, 200, 38.5k in the stack in this first interesting hand. I'm on the button with jack nine of hearts and it folds all the way around to me. I open it up to 700. The big blind is the only caller, so we go heads up to ace queen five two tone, a board that is definitely favorable for my range. So when he checks, I decide to opt for a slightly large size here, 1.3k, trying to pressure on this double Broadway board. He makes the call and on the turn, king of diamonds. Brings a third diamond to the board, he leads for 1.8k. Uh, it's a card, it's definitely a toss up, but given that my hand has essentially no equity when I call here, I just can't really do much. I have a gut shot that might not even be live, so this is just a clear fold and move on to the next one. 200, 300, 300 now. It's been a bit since the last interesting hand and 33k in the stack here. The button makes it 800 and I'm on the big blind and look down at ace three offsuit. You guys seem to hate when I continue with these offsuit ace x in the blinds, but I promise promise you that these are generally going to be good calls, uh, particularly against late position. If under the gun opens, you could certainly consider folding this, but here we definitely can't. I make the call. Plus, it turns out I'm psychic. The board comes out ace-7-3 with two diamonds. I'm loving life here, but I'm not going to be leading on this ace-high board. I check, he bets 800, and I check race to 2.8k, as I'll have many flush draws, straight draws, combo draws, and uh, a couple of two pairs as well that can uh, put in some action. He now three bets to 6.5k. Pretty scary uh, on the surface, but I think there are a lot of hands that people could do this with that we beat. Hands like ace king and ace queen may feel like they're ahead enough of the time and be scared of turns. He'll also have uh, many draws himself, but I decide that I don't want to just stuff it in because we're pretty darn deep still. I make the call and I've also played with him enough that I feel like he's pretty value heavy here and I kind of just want to see how things shake out. I make the call and on the turn queen of spades, I check. I'm not going to try to take the betting lead away on this particular card, especially because I think ace queen could be out there. He just checks it back though, which I think is insanely good for us. He could have a hand like ace king and be a little bit worried. Uh, maybe he's slow playing something, but I think that's a little bit less likely given that there are still two diamonds out there. On a river deuce of diamonds, I think that it's unlikely now that he has draws and I want to target his hands that can kind of put in one more bet, but can't put in a big one where he'll check them back, but he'll call. I decide to lead for 6k kind of as an in-between almost block sort of size and he tanks a very long time, but ultimately just folds. So maybe he did have ace king and figures we have a flush and gets away. Not really sure, but nice to be taking one down here. However, it's a little bit later on and we're bleeding quite a bit. It's literally two blind levels later until we play another interesting hand. 32k in the stack at 300, 500, 500. I'm under the gun with ace queen offsuit. I bump it up to 1.3k and the button and both blinds call. So four ways to a flop that's queen high. Queen eight five rainbow. So it's looking pretty good for us and it checks to me. I decide that I'm gonna play this a little deceptively and check, not something I'll do always, but multi-way will have fewer bets, so it's kind of nice to have a hand like this in range. Button makes it 3.2K and small blind calls. The big blind folds, so we're now in a pretty tricky spot. If we just call, we've relinquished the betting lead and can't guarantee that a bet goes in on the turn unless we lead, which feels very unnatural. But if I check raise, I'm kind of signaling I have a very strong hand and might might sometimes value cut myself. But I do decide to check raise here, seeing as I can check raise to a pretty reasonable size and just get it in on the turn for not a ton more money. I make it 10.6K, both end up folding, and I think this is a pretty close spot, but I don't hate how I play. In this next hand, we have 38K in the stack, and the low jack, who's a kind of crazy guy, makes it 1.5K. The cutoff calls, and I'm on the button with a beautiful ace nine of hearts. This is exactly the kind of hand that I would like to squeeze against a crazy opener. I make it 6k, the low jack calls, and the flop comes ace, eight, three, no hearts though. He checks. I see bet 3.6k here, a pretty small size as I'll do in three bet pots on an ace high board in position pretty much always, but he check raises to 10k. Against pretty much anybody else, this is super scary, but he's done a lot of stuff like this and he definitely doesn't have to just have it. I make the call, pretty prepared to call off on almost any turn. The turn is the 10 of clubs. Brings in another draw or two, but I don't know if he's kind of structuring his range in the same way that most people would. So I'm not sure how much that matters. 
He thinks for a while and then jams 24K. I make the call pretty quickly as planned and he shows Queen Jack offsuit. So he has actually picked up some additional equity here, a weird kind of backdoor double gutter that comes in, but on the river six of hearts, we're scooping this one, a big one, and a much needed chip up. All right, it's super cold in here, which is why I've got the, uh, the full hoodie on, which I almost never do. Uh, first break, and I can't believe how it's gone. I just like was pretty card dead, then opened a bunch of spots and uh, had none of them work out, and then got this almost double. Uh, so pretty sick spot, massive gift, obviously, and uh, yeah. Let's see if we can keep spinning it up. The table's good. 300, 600, 600 now, and 90K in the stack. We've been chipping up, doing work. After that break, the low jack opens, so 1.3K, and the small blind calls. We the big blind with A7 off, and this is a kind of spot where I think we could just fold multi-way a weak sort of middling offsuit ace is not going to perform that well but i do decide to call here the flop comes out seven six deuce rainbow and it checks around turn is the five of spades and i definitely want to be protecting my equity here uh, there's now a flush draw on board several straight draws and while straights are possible they're not that likely however the small mind beats me to the punch and bets 3k i think i could consider raising here trying to get value from worse trying to sort of charge the draws but i decided to just call here and the river is gin. It's the ace of clubs and now the small blind checks. This is a pretty cool spot because we know we almost always have the best hand, but it's also kind of weird because maybe this is a scare card. It probably shouldn't be as only ace x of spades are most of my ace x hands. Uh, I guess ace six, ace five, ace seven are out there as well, but he shouldn't be too scared. Like I, if he has a seven, he should strongly consider calling off. I should probably consider going kind of small, but I decide to rep a really polarized range here and just jam for his roughly 29k. He thinks for a long time before ultimately calling with pocket deuces? Oh, this one just makes me sick to my stomach. Unfortunate one, obviously a sad river, and I could have saved it all by just not calling pre. I know I'm gonna have some uh, some comments on this one, so go ahead, lay it on me. Maybe I'll pin the most entertaining one. So cut down a fair bit here, and in the very next hand, there's an open for middle position, the button, three bets, and the three better is very active, very out there, really involved. So I just decide to go for it here and cold four bet jam a seven of spades. Kind of one of those spots where I feel like I need to put a disclaimer, don't try this one at home. Uh, this one might be solver approved, but it also definitely might not. I actually don't know what my exact stack is here, but I just decided to rip it in, and if I bust, I'm, I'm willing to rebuy. It does just get through though here, so in this next spot, 55k in the stack, and the low jack opens to 1.5k. It's actually just two hands later, and I'm in the cutoff, and I think that against this different opponent, I'm actually going to have a somewhat steamy image. He's going to interpret sort of my three raises a little bit differently, a little bit weaker than the guy from the previous spot. I decided to go 5.2k, bigger than my normal in position size, um, but I think he's just going to Give me some action. That's what he does, calling, and the flop comes 10, 8, 3. He checks, and again, I see no real need to go tiny here because I just don't think he's gonna believe me. I bet 6.8K, he makes it 15.2K, and while this might be scary on the surface, I'm just loving life. Yeah, there's some draws, and they might come in, but I think most of the time I just have him stone crushed where he's got a 10 and I'm going to get it in super good here. I also don't think there's any need to wait when he check raises in a three bet pot. He's signaling he's ready. So I jam it in for his roughly 40k effective and he snaps with ace 10. Turn breaks out, river breaks out, and we scoop a big one here. Get a much needed approximate double up. In this next hand, blinds are up once again a couple more levels. 110k in the stack. We've been treading water pretty well here, but the blinds are 500, 1k, 1k. I look down at red pocket jacks from under the gun and open to 2.2k. Middle position calls, and the flop rolls out the beautiful ace jack six. I could see about this for sure, as I can likely get three streets from an ace, but I decided to check this time, and he mets 3.2k with 17k behind. One thing that's nice about going deceptive here and not betting with such a strong holding is if he ever just has pure air, he gets to put in a bet or maybe even two with something that could never call. I also definitely don't need to check race here. Yeah, flush draws are out there, but I really just want to string him along if possible. I make the call and on a turn, four of hearts, second heart on board, two flush draws available. I check and he just jams. I obviously snap here. There's just absolutely no way I'm not good but he has somehow the king 10 of hearts. I guess this is the somewhat scary part about 
not just betting flop. He probably still would peel the flop with this hand anyway, but uh, I let him see a card that allowed him to kind of catch up from an equity standpoint. However, I'm still in good shape here with only one more card to come. But the river's a nine of hearts. Oh, disaster strikes and we lose a pretty big one. Not the end of the world. He could have been deeper and it could have been worse, but kind of unfortunate. Cut down to 83K in this next hand, 600, 1200, 1200 blinds. Cut off open jams, 21K. Not quite 20 big blinds and I'm on the button with king queen of spades. It's not a super comfortable spot, but it's kind of one you just have to go with. I decided to rejam because both of the blinds have 25k or less as well. They just fold through, and of course the cutoff has ace queen. Uh, kind of a setup here, I think. The board rolls out seven, four, three, six. Can you call for a five? Call for a five in the chat one time. Nice work, everybody. It's a five. We chop it up and uh, yeah, sheepishly pull those chips in, but it's another two blind levels before our next interesting hand. We've been chipping down here 61k now in the stack at 1k, 2k, 2k, just 30 blinds to play with. The low jack makes it 4.5k and I'm on the button with ace nine offsuit and make a somewhat uncomfortable call. These middling offsuit ace x aren't super fun, but they're okay here. Small buy makes the call as well, and the flop rolls out. King, 10, 3, all spades. With the ace of spades in my hand, this is sort of a godsend. It checks to me, and while we could bet here, I decide to just check it back. It'll be nice for some deception if a fourth spade does roll off. Nobody's really going to expect me to have the ace. On a turn, three of clubs pairing the board. It checks to me again, and I don't think I actually rep a whole lot. So I decided to check it back once more. I might have the opportunity to stab at some brick rivers, and of course I could still hit a spade. Rivers the five of spades. It checks to me once again, and now I just kind of have to look like I'm bluffing. I Like I'm just stabbing one time, and I think there's plenty of hands I could do that with here. I decided about 8.5k, and the small blind actually is the one to make the call. So we could have even been called from behind, but he does manage to find the call with just the four of spades pocket fours, and we chip up a little bit here. It's hard though, as these blinds are relentless and with about 30 big blinds, 76K or so at 1K, 2.5K, 2.5K, the cutoff opens to 5.5K. I'm in the small blind with ace five offsuit, and I don't really love this in retrospect, but I was at a new table struggling to find spots, and I just kind of wanted to take a low frequency hand to the felt here. I think jamming might actually be better than three betting small, but I thought a small three bet might look stronger, so I end up making it 19k. The cutoff calls and the flop comes 8-4 deuce. Oh boy. <laughs> this is just one of those hands that tends to spiral out of control. And while I could bet this flop for sure, I decide to check playing to check jam as my range is just so much stronger. What's funny is I've actually run this spot in GTO check and it really hates my check. If you look at the action node for the flop set of actions, Check is technically on there, but it's just such a sliver in the circle graph here, the pie chart, whatever you call it. It's uh, it's so small that you can't even you can't even really click on the sliver. You have to click on where it says check. Once I do check and he bets 20k, uh, not a size he probably should be using, but eh, it's not that bad. We definitely get to jam a lot of hands here, and my exact holding is going to be jamming uh, quite a significant amount of the time. That's what I end up doing here, ripping it in with this gut shot and ace high, but he super snaps me, beating me into the pot. It feels like this is happening over and over again. I'm worried I'm up against the set and drawing just to the gutter, but actually he shows me pocket sixes. Really the only better scenario here, I think, would be if he somehow called off with pocket threes and the five was good, but then you're losing some of the gut shot outs. Kind of tough one. Feels like we're still really live though here, so I'm looking for some help. Turn is a brick, river is a brick, <laughs> and I'm out. I can't really say that I played this tournament the best, but I had to kind of shake some of it off after the main. It's really hard to come in and play really well after that kind of a run. If you haven't checked out my main event vlog, I definitely recommend that you do, as it's full of some nonsense, as well as some better play for me, in my opinion. Well, this thing's never fun, um, but the good news is there's still one more flight in this thing tomorrow. So I'm already registered for that, and um, yeah, it's at least not too late in the day. I actually don't really feel tired, which I'm surprised by because I felt tired at like 2 p.m. or something, but then I re kind of rebounded after uh, getting some food in me. I I've been fasting in the mornings. Maybe I need to kind of like take it easy a little bit with that because it's been a little much. Obviously, the final hand is sort of debatable. Uh, I think it's low frequency pre-flop for sure, but I think my line 
post, given the stacked up is pretty good. Get him to just stab with a bunch of stuff and then stuff it. And a lot of his hands can't call, even the ones that have good equity against my exact holding. So uh, yeah, I you know, he super snapped sixes. So I was a little surprised that I had as much uh, chances I did, but I didn't get there. And uh, yeah, it's hard to be disappointed in this one. Small buy-in, no big deal. Anyway, tomorrow's the last flight of this. And then if I bust that, I may fire the 2,500 mixed big bet just kind of for fun. It's a 2,500. The mix is very uh, full of games that I don't play that often, uh, but that I have played at least. So uh, that, that would be fun uh, if that happened, but I think my priority has to be the no limit. Uh, but remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. <sighs> and I suppose always remember to just triple.